welcome back to the Spizzle Lock, the series where every episode I play through an entire Pokemon game trying to beat the challenge of playing every Pokemon game in a row as a generation lock with no repeat Pokemon. We of course play on set mode and things to aid me in this quest are I get to bring survivors of the last leg as level 5 babes, but I also get one healing item per important battle. And yes, we hack in rare candies to avoid grinding, but level caps are in place for this challenge. And with that being everything you need to know about the challenge itself, please consider subscribing as this video took a lot of effort to make and so did every other video in this playlist here. But without further delay, let's get right into Spizzalock Saga 4 Leg 14 Pokemon Heart Gold. We wake up and pick our starter, Crouton the Cyndaquil. We enjoy the lovely scenery for a moment before making our way to Cherry Grove to pick up the team that survived the last leg. Now, for those of you who are new, this episode is actually a very important one, as not only had the Spizzalock just turned a year old at the time of writing the script, this episode would be the last time we would ever step foot into the Johto or Kanto region. You see, out of the 14 episodes of Spizzalock, including this one, only 4 of these episodes have taken place outside of these two regions. We have been playing and replaying Johto, and especially Kanto, for 10 episodes, and it made us have to be really picky and strategic about who we added to the team and when. So I for one am very excited to be kissing the backbone of the franchise behind, as this would open the door to many, many new encounters. You see, due to the very high number of deaths we've been having in the last few episodes, it's been making it very difficult to find sufficient team members for this challenge, and that scarcity of Pokemon really shines through this episode. With that being said, we pick up our reincarnated pouch beasts, Jack Jr., Aurora the 2nd, Ivy the 2nd, and Slicer X the 14th. We then beat up our rival who we dubbed Luminix, and I'm gonna cut off your angry comments here. If you saw the last episode, you know Ivy the Tangriff died, and Hera is nowhere to be found. This is a mistake I made that I will soon correct. Luckily for us, Tangela, due to move pool, isn't very good at all early game, and the first two badges were flying and bug, so we didn't actually really see any usage of Ivy at all. So while I started our journey completely oblivious to the origins of this Lovecraftian tot following me around and, uh, where the hell Hera is, you're just gonna have to bear with me. If you watch this series enough, I'm sure you'll catch on, I've always been a few fries short of a Happy Meal. We then watch this episode's randomized catching tutorial. My food ASMR, where I chew and breathe really loudly. Hey yo bro. Do not catch that. Do not catch that bro. No br- no. You're weird. Alright, no. Yeah, no, bro. I, nah. I can't even take another bite. That's so crazy. Let me let me mute my mic to finish this bite. We catch a Rattata named Yonkers and Spinda the Spinarak and catch Casper the Ghastly in Sprout Tower. I then decide I wasn't a huge fan of the name Crouton and use my hacker skills to rename Crouton to Life, who we welcome to the team by allowing him to mow down the entirety of Sprout Tower. We then make our way to the Violet City Gym Leader, Faulkner, for the last time. And yes, I will be saying this a lot, because I am so happy to be getting out of these regions. We lead with Aurora and Pidgey and paralyze with T-Wave, and then switch into Jack for his debut fight. You see, Jack is an Apom who doesn't quite have a feel for combat, so he's never actually damaged his opponents. He likes to run a set of Nasty Plot, Agility, Baton Pass, and another non-damaging filler move. Unfortunately for him, that only comes around when he's fully grown, and we needed some manpower, so we threw our baby boy in the ring and watched what he could do successfully taking out Pidgey in a single hit. However, he gets cold feet with Pidgeotto and Aurora has to come back out. She lands another T-Wave and gets dangerously close to death with a crit gust, so we go to Slicer X, whose insane bulk and resist manages to withstand the oncoming blows and we leer and scratch our way to victory. Then, trying to preserve my future Dragonite, I box Aurora and continue on to Bugsy. Going down into the mines, I stop the Rocket Grunts yet again from their weird culinary habits. The energy from life's combusting this dude's coughings allowed him to evolve into Quilava. We advance to Bugsy's gym, being careful to squash every insect Pokemon in our path so Bugsy knows how much I hate him as a gym leader, even after I'm gone. It's Scyther vs. Quilava, and life almost gets packed but pulls through for the KO. Despite how tempting it was for life to mow through the remaining Pokemon, Poison Sting was a threat, so Jack subbed in for his homie and courageously beat up two soulless cocoons. On our travels, Slicer X uses some esoteric wisdom to guide this lost soul, and as I approach the daycare, this is when I realize Ivy had been dead since our last encounter with Red. I was a little confused on where this Tangela came from, but I deduced that after Ivy got turned into confetti, some of the strands must have landed in my bag and grew into this thing. So I renamed it Blossom and sent Ivy's crotch spawn to the Universal Allies box, so our old friends would have something to keep them busy during their retirement. I reintroduce Hera to the team, and with that we prepare for Whitney. 
And by prepare, I mean we grab a quick claw and throw on Spinda as well as Yonkers. We start the battle, and I was pissed. As this would be our final showdown against Whitney. And it reminded me about all those I had lost just to her two Pokemon. Ragnar. Subject. Grenade. Goals. Messi. Uva. I send out Hera and get to clapping, one-shotting Clefairy and doing huge damage to Miltank with each Brick Break. We simply outpaced her with damage and gave her the finishing blow thanks to Quick Claw. We then handle our annoying rival at the Burn Tower where we think up a strategy to face off against Morty. And by strategy, I mean we evolve Yonkers and Spinda. We get right into battle and Hera was still on her demon time from last gym as we one-shot Ghastly and Haunter with a Night Slash. Morty realizes it's time for the big guns, but our Quick Claw allows us to outspeed and get Gengar super low. We get trapped by Mean Look, but Quick Claw activates again and we KO. Haunter of course gets pieced up and with that we're already 4 badges down. However, there was a looming threat approaching us. You see, we had barely picked up any encounters along the way, and this wasn't due to us not trying. Most routes we came across were dead, meaning we had used everything in that route before, but the levels were getting a bit too high, even for Slicer X and Jack. And with them joining Aurora in the box, we would only have Hera and Life to hold things down. And we learned from last episode, this was not a viable strategy. So we decided to make Spinda and Yonkers actual members of the team. And for stream viewers and attentive box checkers, you know how long Yonkers has been waiting for this moment. We then added Nog the Execute. We catch beside in the polywagon a local pond and move forward to do our string of side quests. On our pit stop for picking up medicine for a sheep homunculus, we decide now's our chance to oil up and sumo against Chuck, so in preparation of his stupid polyrath ruining my evening, I grab Bob Bloss and the Oddish and evolve him into, uh, you know. Then for extra style points, we box Nog and evolve Poseidon all the way into Polyrath. I then make a brutal mistake of clicking on Chuck before I leveled my team, making us three levels under the level cap, with our only saving grace being it's a 6v2. I guess that isn't really a bad saving grace either when you think about it. I immediately debut Bob Lawson, who shimmies out of the way of a rock slide, stun spores an evasion setting Primeape, who is unaware of how Magical Leap works as we take it out in a few turns. We then switch to Spinda to block Hypnosis due to our ability Insomnia. However, Spinda couldn't really do anything after that. So I made the most of what I had, and popped off a scary face and a pitiful poison sting, before Polyrath crits out my Ariados, killing it. We send out Bob Blossom and go for a poison powder. However, this was a big mistake, as Polyrath chose Focus Punch and uh, turned my Flower Boy into a uh, Caesar salad. Using Headbutt to break Polyrath's focus, we dodge Hypnosis, and after many, many turns, we finally claim victory. Though, I was a bit disheartened. Although we had implemented our lesson learned from last episode and kept our team filled out, I still felt a twinge of regret. Was that really what this series was about now? Foddering weaker teammates? Sacrificing the new for the old? The difficulty of Saga 4 had ramped up a lot, so naturally more Pokemon died. From random crits, to being backed into a corner and having no other choice. But as time went on, I felt myself slipping a bit wanting so desperately to hold on to Pokemon I held close. I started adding Pokemon and sending them out for the sole purpose of doing as much damage as possible before dying, or to be thrown as just a sack so we could heal. Was this the kind of leadership I wanted to show the new guys? We take our victory lap across the ocean and remember we were supposed to deliver medicine to a dying animal six hours ago, so we head to the lighthouse and fulfill our obligations. It was now time to deal with the Lake of Rage's shiny Gyarados one more time, and in the process we had an interesting encounter all right we have a new route here i believe um this is route 43 so we got a new encounter to be had here yo chat no chat we did it chat we did it it's been it's taken like 13 games 14 games, 20 games, 86 million games, bro. We found a shiny. We found a shiny. We dubbed her Sebus the Giraffe Rig. And after 14 episodes, or I guess 11 possible episodes, we finally got our hands on a shiny. Although it isn't the most practical encounter we could have gotten, I love the colors and I love the Pokemon. So 10 out of 10 giraffe. Welcome to the team. However, before we fought Price, I realized I didn't really have a good way back to Olivine City. Sure, I could walk, but that would take forever, and I don't have the attention span to backtrack. 
but I literally could not find anything in the box that could learn fly. And since Hera skipped wing day, I picked up a newspaper, called What's a shady ad, button? found a delivery guy in a trench coat, and was given... <laughs> We hacked in a fly HM slave alongside Meryl so we could travel easier. And to be honest, I wanted to travel in style for our final hurrah in Johto. With a solid team, a poisoned guts rhino beetle, a new shiny, and <laughs> we sweet price with Hera's brick rig. Keeping Hera full of microplastics, we rush her over to Olivine with the help of... <clears throat> I was still salty about losing my jinx to her, as it was absolutely her fault I forgot Ice was weak to steel, and we sweep her magnemites with Brick Break. We switch to Polyrath, who catches an Iron Tail and lands a successful hypnosis on stealing. Charging our focus, we then one-shot with a Dragon Fist. We then have to deal with Team Rocket for a final time, thankfully, and we battle many, many trainers, grinding minimal XP as we one-shot almost everything. Although, it was a good opportunity to use some of the new members of the team. We clap and slap and fool around until we meet this blue haired dude and he caused us a little trouble but at the end of the day we were always a few levels ahead. After that was squared away it opened up a bit more of the map allowing us to get some new encounters. We evolve life and capture the blob the Lickitung. That just sounds weird. Making our way to Blackthorn we evolve Slicer X and welcome him back to the squad's throne. We then decide to immediately backtrack and pick up choice specs at the Lake of Rage. After that, we slapped him on Slicer X, taught him Ice Beam, and it was sufficient enough to handle the trainers in Claire's gym. Although the real issue of her gym is I should have planned for the fact that I'm so bad at puzzles, you may as well just give me a one block Rubik's Cube. Uh, this is so, I hate, I hate these puzzles. They kind of, they kind of jerk my willy the wrong way on the down low chat. On the down low, they, they, they stroke my willy the wrong way. No, bruh. Excuse me. Ugh. Has there been a single puzzle the entire lock that you haven't got? Yep, you're banned. Have a good night. Okay, in my defense, right? How do you expect me to remember all that? Yo, chat. Y'all forget, like, I've played most of these games, bro. I'm not, like, a dummy, right? I'm not, like, stupid. I'm just... I'm I'm just... I have a job, bro. I have, like, two jobs. Like, how am I, how am I supposed to remember all the, the Pokemon bullshit? But I'm like cranking my jobs, man. Like, I get that y'all are just jobless and you sit in your goon cave all day and you stroke it to anime women every day, all of you, anime men for Mega Jason. And, you know, that's all you do with your time. I get that, right? But I have a job. I'm working towards a career. I'm in school. I have a girlfriend. I have animals. I have family. I have friends. I have hobbies. I have sports. I have money. I got motion. Right? So I can't remember all these puzzles, right? Because I'm him, okay? So it, it makes sense to me that you guys understand, that you guys memorize, and you guys study and practice and do flashcards in your basement, okay? You have a girlfriend, your right hand does not count, and your band. After that fandango, we look over our team before the battle. Sebus, shiny giraffe rig with quick claw, baton, uh, inner focus, baton pass, psychic, thunderbolt agility, yonkers, with guts, cut, crunch, sucker punch, headbutt, Poseidon, water absorb, body slam, hypnosis, waterfall, focus punch, wide lens. Oh yeah, eradicate's got a silk scarf. Uh, Hera, Akaberry, close combat, guts, night slash counter, brick break. Uh, Kabutops, this isn't probably, this probably isn't going to be in the video. I don't really give a shit. Uh, choice specs, aqua jet, battle armor, waterfall, ice beam, slash, and then life. Pasho, berry, blaze, strength, quick attack, lava, plume, flame, wheel. I think we're ready. I think we're steady. I think we're gonna, I don't know, we're gonna touch her, I guess. We lead with our shiny new giraffe rig and use T-Bolt, hoping for an Oko, but it isn't enough and big damage is done to us through Bite. We decide to go to Yonkers and luckily she heals. We trade blows with neither side flinching and Yonkers finishes it off with a sucker punch. We get another safe switch in as Slicer X dodges slam on Dragonair and almost Okos with Specs Ice Beam and then we get paralyzed. We KO and manage to get the next Dragonair low before we were in KO range, so Poseidon finishes it off with a body slam. Taking on another attack, he lands Hypnosis and we switch to Hera and then heal Slicer X. We take big Hydro Pump damage, but Hera gets her lick back. We utilize Water Absorb to passive heal and safe switch. I'm in a rough position, so I have to take a gamble. Body slam paralysis is only a 30% chance, and even then we're not guaranteed for it to stay unmoving. So I needed to land the 60% chance of Hypnosis to ensure I could at least land an attack. Poseidon narrowly survives Dragon Pulse and connects. We tighten our focus and connect again. 
However, Kingdra hangs on and eats a berry. I for some reason make this weird throw here where I think Focus Punch is a two-turn move and Body Slam, failing to secure the KO. Player then heals and we Body Slam again, getting the Paralysis this time and walling us from Focus Punch strats again. Yeah, I may be a couple sauces short too. Backed into a sticky situation, I decide to do what I do best. Make up stupid niche strategies. I send out Life who tanks Dragon Pulse, baiting Hydro Pump. We go back to Poseidon to heal, and Kingdra stays paralyzed. Uh, that didn't work out very well. That, that worked out better in my head chat. You know, sometimes in life chat, you just gotta take a risk. That's actually embarrassing. That's so embarrassing, bro. That's such a- We throw in a healed but paralyzed Slicer X, and despite his best efforts, fails to pull through. Looking at my team's health, I have no other choice but to go Hera. He survives a dragon pulse and takes a page out of an old friend's book. And there we have it. Johto is officially over. Well, we still got the Elite Four, so, uh. Oh my goodness, this fan is spinning at a rate that is too fast and it is making me cold. We go to fight the Kimono Girl so we can catch Ho-Oh. The Umbreon battle goes well, but faced against Espeon, we agility baton past the Yonkers, who, despite superior level, absolutely could not handle Psychic. We try to Oko with Crunch, but we fail, and Yonkers, after following me across countless timelines for over a year to join my team, died like a dog during a single leg. Maybe you shouldn't ever meet your heroes. Life finishes Espeon, Slicer X handles Flareon, Life handles Jolteon, getting paralyzed in the process, and we're down to the final dancer. Unfortunately though, we're down to four fighters, and one being a paralyzed fire type, and our team had seen better days. I decide Sebus can handle it and go for T-Bolt, doing about a third health. And Vaporeon crits his Surf and kills my shiny Giraffe Rig. <laughs> I was really tweaking after that death. I felt we had been doing so well compared to the last legs on deaths, and now we were five deaths in and I lost my shiny Pokemon. The one I had planned to keep and clickbait and farm for views for many legs to come, gone minutes after it was introduced. I didn't even sack any Pokemon this time, I just had no other choice. I was caught off guard and lost two valuable members. With three team slots open, Aurora, Jack, and Nog all make their way back onto the team as we prepare to chuck a stupid purple ball at Ho-Oh. We evolve Aurora into Dragonair and Jack into Ambipong. Although I failed this shiny, with Diamond and Pearl opening up a lot of new encounters, maybe a shiny hunt was in our future. I can touch it. I can literally touch it. Oh, here it comes. All right, let me reach out. Oh, so I have to draw a new version of our block for me because, you know, a Weezing is now part fairy. Drew a new art block that was poison steel, and I thought it was epic. Hell yeah. Uh, I've always wondered about, like, you know, YouTubers who have, like, a P.O. box? I've always wondered about that, because, um, like, how do you know someone's not just going to send you a bomb in the mail? You know what I mean? It's like, obviously, typically, bombs aren't sent to people through the mail, but it's like, imagine you're, like, iDubs, right? And you, you're, you, like, say the hard R on, in, in, on camera in front of thousands of people, and, like, and then you're like, hey, guys, send me packages to my house, and I'll open them on camera. You ever think about that? Let me, let me get a flick with Ho-Oh real quick. All right, we're gonna name you Bald. After making our way through Victory Road following a 14-year-old tutorial, no, I do not have the route memorized yet, shut up, we catch Law the Dawn fan and prepare for the Elite Four. Unfortunately, Aurora had to go back in the box immediately because despite Lance having like three fucking Dragonites illegally, I can't bring one myself due to level caps. And Execute doesn't get Psychic till later, so... 
Law of the Dawn fan joins the team. Since, like I've said before, we were super tight on options and Stab Earthquake was really hard to pass up compared to our other options. It also got rollout in Thunderfang for some coverage and we needed something for Gyarados. We also added the Blob since their move pool was super diverse and we needed to cover as many bases as possible. We evolved them into Lickitung and cook up some move sets and this is what we landed on. The Blob with choice specs. Thunder, Shadow Ball, Blizzard, me first. Law with Wide Lens, Magnitude, Rollout, Thunderfang, Defense, Curl. Hera, the second with Choice Scarf, Close Combat, Nice Slash, Aerial Ace, Brick Break. Jack Jr. with Agility, Baton Pass, Nasty Plot, Screech. Life with Passion, Oberry, Quick Attack, Flamethrower, Hidden Power, Gyro Ball. We don't have anything on Jack Jr. Slicer X, the 14th, Never Melt, Ice, Aqua Jet, Waterfall, Ice Beam, Swords, Dance. Starting off the battle with Will, and thanks to a viewer on my stream, Luminix opened my eyes to a strategy I had not thought of before. Nasty Plot Baton passing to a Scarfed Typhlosion would simply outspeed and one-shot nearly everything in the Elite Four. The only thing stopping us from sweeping Will, though, was his slow bro, who was tanky, resisted my attacks, and was, most obviously, super effective. However, this is where Luminix strategy comes into play. After insisting I check Typhlosion's hidden power, we discover it's Bug, which is perfect as it got around the Slowbro resist issue. However, Scarf would limit us to a single move, which is where I came in with the idea to replace Scarf with a Pasho Berry, which would half the damage of Slowbro's water type attack. And I knew I was safe taking off Scarf because after checking stats, life already outsped everything on Will's team. We start the battle and successfully pass on Nasty Plot to life. However, luck is not on my side today as Will's Totem of Disappointment over here did huge damage and got the special defense drop, making me super nervous to go for the attack. But trusting in my strategy, I go for it regardless. Life pushes forward and like a beast, one shots. Globro is out next immediately and we go for hidden power, doing enough damage to KO next turn and keeping it out of heal range. Globro goes for a water pulse and we hold our breath. We survive, but get confused. We're not out of the weeds yet. I take a risk and use my one healing item, curing confusion and bringing our HP to max. We survived yet again, but barely. However, since we weren't confused anymore, we defeat Slowbro with another hidden power. From there, it's three Pokemon down and three flamethrowers. <laughs> This time I give life a choice scarf, and we go for the same strat against Koga. We get our nasty plot off, and with Typhlosion's unmatched speed and might, we KO Ariados and Fortress in a single hit. Muck wastes this turn on Minimize, and Crobat and Venomoth also get KO'd. For Bruno, we have Scarf the Slicer X and Specs the Typhlosion to turn its flamethrower into a playground metal slide. We send out Jack for him on top and use Nasty Plot. However, since Bruno used Dig and I'm not switching out on that, I punish in Nasty Plot again. Due to him for some reason using Dig again, we get two agilities off before finally passing it all to life. We take our plus four special attack, plus four speed, choice specs Typhlosion, and get a safe switch in due to counter. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. However, there was an issue. We only had four flamethrowers left. And Bruno had five Pokemon. Fuck it, we ball. And here comes number 13, Mr. All coming from the three point line right now. Oh shit, that nigga's on fucking the nigga. Realizing his Hitmonchan has no fighting moves, we use the Blob to tank all of its attacks and try to finish things off. However, even after using our healing item and Hitmonchan having no super effective moves, the Blob still failed to secure the KO. Law also took a crack at it, but in the end, Hera was the one who claimed us victory. Lastly, it's time for Karen, and after replenishing life's flamethrower PP, we lead with Jack once again, who sets two nasty plots. However, in the process, Umbreon sets double team, and confuses life after dodging an attack. We eventually secure the KO, and I misread my screen thinking I snapped out of confusion and click flamethrower. So, to my surprise, I hurt myself and see Gengar used focus blast, and I'm just sitting here thinking, Aw oh, man, I'm cooked! But life dodges. We full restore, he dodges again, and we one shot. He needs some milk! Houndoom stops our sweep, but he's no match for Slicer X. We go to the blob to tank pedal dance, and then go to Hera, who takes the last attack and aerial aces till KO. Murkrow's out, and Slicer X handles it, winning us the Elite Four Gauntlet.
And now we were here at the gates of Lance, about to face him for the final time. We fought well to get where we were, and this time we had not lost a single member to the Elite Four. I was tired of fodderizing my teammates. Not all Pokemon are created equal, but they're all here to help me just the same on this journey, and I needed to use them to their fullest potential if I wanted to climb my way out of this send-off to vanilla Pokemon games. We walk into Lance's room and start the battle. Using our scarfed Licky Licky, we get outsped anyway and flinched by Waterfall. An excellent start. With half our health down, we Oko Gyarados with Thunder. Ace Dragonite's out, and I'm realizing maybe a choice item wasn't the best idea for my mixed attacking type cover. I go to Law, thinking he could easily tank with his high HP and defense stat. But alas, Dragonite was far too powerful, as it gave me no other choice but to sacrifice him to Lance so I could get a safe switch in. I was, of course, angry at this. I didn't even get to see what Law could do in battle before he perished, and his death wasn't one I could have predicted or played around. I would simply believed in his stats and had not seen him perform in battle yet, so I couldn't blame myself too hard this time. We still had five Pokemon left and a mission to accomplish. We then make a super risky play. You see, Lance's team was far too powerful, and although my original plan was Slicer X using Hail and then the Blob using Blizzard, I knew now that wasn't going to happen realistically. And with Blob getting outsped even with Scarf, all had seemed lost. Nobody had the firepower to adequately handle all three Dragonite. However, if I could pop off an agility, the Blob would have the necessary speed to sweep. It was risky, it was crazy, it was stupid. But it just might make an interesting Spizzlelock episode. Knowing the risks, Jack bravely sets agility while Dragonite connects a full force outrage. And Jack survives. Dragonite's confused, and we successfully set up into the blob. We finally outspeed, and despite Dragonite doing huge damage after clinging on, we KO next turn and find out his other two Dragonite just missed the mark on stats to be able to survive our blizzards like his ace did. Charizard's out and we go to Slicer X, who swiftly KOs, and Aerodactyl is out. Slicer X charges forward with Waterfall. Aerodactyl catches him with Thunderfang, but Slicer X comes out the other side victorious, finishing our final Johto League battle. We enter the Hall of Fame and pay our respects to Law. Things were going to be different now. It was time to take all the skill and lessons we accumulated from our previous Johto and Kanto runs and mix it with a little Hoenn and Sinnoh sauce and finish off our final Kanto journey stronger than ever. The sixth slot free and desperately not wanting to feel like I've wasted an encounter, I add Nog back to the team and finally let it evolve now that it can learn Psychic. Me and Life take over the ship hauling us to Kanto and upon landing we have to take our dead Raticate to cut through the brush so we can access- I'm coming home sweetie! I'm back in the fucking building again! We face Lieutenant Surge for a final showdown. We set an agility with Jack and we get paralyzed. Raichu starts breaking it down crazy style on us while I struggle to get a single nasty plot up. By the time we baton pass, Raichu had set five double teams, so I go to the only member of our team with a non-accuracy checking move, Hera with Aerial Ace. Surge then goes for a Thunder Wave, activating our Guts ability and allowing our otherwise weak non-stab fly move to do big damage. I take a turn to heal Jack, and then Hera gets absolutely put through the meat grinder against Raichu. Nog makes their debut and handles Raichu. Next, we go to the Blob for Electrode, and it starts setting evasion. I try and do another setup with Jack, but a defense drop forces me to reset the process. We successfully pull it off attempt 2 and go to life. He pulls through and one shots Electrode. After that, specs and agility allow us to sweep Surge, cementing life in Jack as the most devious duo of the team. We evolve Aurora and replace Jack for her as we needed to have peak power if we were going to get past Sabrina Deathless. Well, if we could ever get to her room, that is. Keep going in a circle until you hit the right one. I don't think that's how the puzzle works. Yo, chat. Um, am I brain dead? Um, what the sigma? I I don't know what to do, guys. I'm scared. I'm lost. I'm in the back rooms. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. It's this one. And then it's this one. And then it's this one. Nope, wrong one. And then it's this one. No, wrong one. And then it's this one. It's neither of them. Okay, okay. It's this one. 
2,000 years later. With a solid team of strength and a vendetta to put to rest, I dedicate this battle to C. Moon and Mr. Cosby, and then throw out the blob. Espeon sets Calm Mind, and we almost Oko with a crit Shadow Ball. She heals, and even though we got two more Shadow Balls off before getting blitzed by Bone Cancer Inducing Psychic, we didn't even get close to KO. But we did manage to get the stat drop. We throw out Nog to tank Psychic, but Espeon speed blitzes us and kills Nog with a Shadow Ball. Aurora comes out and sets D-Dance, almost getting one shot by Psychic, but Aurora's speed and power allow us to outspeed this turn and KO. We roost as Mr. Mime comes out and he mimics us. So we set another D-Dance as he goes for damage and I decide to get devious and paralyze. Set up a third D-Dance after heal spamming and once he couldn't move, we struck. With Dragon Rush one-shotting both Mr. Mime and that dreaded Alakazam. Proving our might and settling our feud once and for all. Jack Jr. is back on the team and we continue our Kanto side quests. We find that Nugget Bridge had grown somewhat of a forest up there, with many trainers lurking about. And we handled them pretty easily. This one trainer with a stupid Porygon shows up. And you know, Porygon is a is known to use electric type moves. So I go into Aurora, right? Okay, I go into Aurora. Mm -hmm. And he uses Ice Beam! <laughs> Killing my prize Dragonite and second pseudo legend. I'm sorry, Aurora. I had no way of knowing this random Porygon and Cerulean had Ice Beam. It should have been the Blob. Even though it was a big price to pay, it was another reminder that stats aren't everything, and I always need to be careful. We face off against Misty and lead with the infamous Jack, who gives us an agility baton pass into the Blob. We then power whips Golduck back into the Pokeball. We get a final attack off Lapras, and Hera finishes things off. We heal the Blob on Quagsire, who sets Amnesia, and we go back to the Blob and finished off the rest of her Pokemon. Without things have been going for life's record, I'm sure you can guess what happened to Erica. However, we learned Eruption, which meant we wouldn't have to spec Typhlosion to one-shot everything. As if we use Scarf to outspeed and stay at full HP, we can sweep almost everything in the game. But we kept Flamethrower as well, just in case. And don't worry Jack, your schmoves are absolutely still valuable to our team. Can't get choice items most games, you know. Moving on, as we blitz the entire region in Life's Hellfire, we land upon Janine's hometown, and I figured it would be the perfect opportunity to test our new Scarf Eruption tech. You gotta be kidding me. Speaking of tech, there's a new tech you can do where you double check if you're subscribed. There's a lot of people who uh, come and watch my videos, but they're not actually subscribed. And I mean, come on, we're like near the end of the fucking video. So if you're here still, you want to sell like you're like it's right there like come on bro. please coming up now on brock and blaine i wanted some more firepower but uh again these were our options okay we had a magnemite and ghastly but we were saving those for gen 5 and 6 respectively so we welcome crayon the dugong to the team what a sweetheart we hitch a ride on good old infinity and make our way to brock this was a very important battle as brock was the first gym leader we had ever faced in this challenge and we faced him time and time again nine times to be exact and this would mark our 10th we had a record of nine and oh considering the people of this world don't pull our punches like we do we're gonna have to go undefeated brock out of respect for me and slicer x put a damn shirt on and challenged us to battle I felt obligated to lead with a leg one Pokemon, a rock type, Slicer X. We sweep his first two Pokemon, but we knew from experience his Giga Drain Kabutops was going to be trouble. So we go to the Blob, who sends it back to the Stone Age with a Power Whip. We miss a Power Whip on Onyx and our defenses get lowered. So I pivot around and back to the Blob. We end up using our healing item, and after Onyx gives the Blob a good drilling, we sweep to finish the battle. And Brock, you really gotta work on those team building skills. Me and Slicer X take a stroll around Pewter, taking in the sights before heading down to Cinnabar Island. <laughs> Which I'm glad we reminisced there, because the lab Slicer X was born in kinda got volcanoed. That's rough, buddy. Our final battle with Blaine commences, and I thought it would be a sweep per usual, but Flame Body burned from a cargo soils our plans, as we didn't have the firepower to KO, and Magmar had a sunny day solar beam with our name on it. For some reason, it uses Confuse Ray though, and own tempo on the blob blocks it meaning he is quite literally too stupid to be confused. 
We Oko with Thunder, and after almost getting melted by an overheat, we heal on Rapidash. But even the Blob's bulk isn't enough for this Inferno Stallion. Yet, we didn't really have much to switch into. We went to Crayon with Thick Fat, but it still does huge damage. I decided to go to Slicer X, who handles it pretty well, and after switching around a couple times and finding our opening, we go to Blob, who, despite getting paralyzed, lands the 70% Thunder in KOs, winning us badge 7. Or 15, I guess. It was now time to prepare ourselves for the final two fights. Blue and Red. We start the battle strong by one-shotting Executor with a 4 times Megahorn. We go to Slicer X and handle Pidgeot with ease. Machamp's an issue, so we go to a fighting type of our own. She eats a dynamic punch and aerial aces through confusion. We full restore, eat a stone edge, and close combat for KO. We try out Crayon for Arcanine, but she, uh, yeah, we're still working on it. So Slicer X steps in to show her how it's done. The blob handles Rhydon, and it's down to the terrifying D-Dance Gyarados. However, since I knew he would click Dragon Dance, I took the roll on Thunder, and it paid off, as we one-shot, winning us the final badge we would ever collect in Kanto. We had fought well, and implemented many new strategies along the way. For every single badge, we either completely overpowered them, or we showcased our strategic prowess, and overcame any challenge that was thrown our way. After a long arc of dedicated training, tweaking movesets, and leveling our Pokemon, we make our way up Mount Silver for a final time. And since this was the last game I could walk around with my little buddies for a while, I decided to look at them all one more time and see how they felt for this battle. Jack sensed a powerful aura nearby while Hera and Life let out a deafening roar, ready for combat. The Blob just barked at a snowflake, while Crayon just played in the snow. I looked at Slicer X, and he's playing in the snow. Yo, we are about to face the most powerful trainer known to man right now, so can we please lock in, you guys? Slicer X, I expected better from you. We can play in the snow after. And here's the team. The Blob, Cherry Berry, Thunder, Knockoff, Blizzard, Earthquake, Crayon, Never Melt Ice, Ice Beam, Aqua Ring, Ice Shard, Brine, Life, Choice Scarf, Quick Attack, Flamethrower, Rock Climb, Eruption, Slicer X the 14th, Metronome, Aqua Jet, Waterfall, Night Slash, Rock Slide, Jack Jr., Silk Scarf, Agility, Knit, Baton Pass, Nasty Plot, Double Hit, Era the 2nd, Muscle Band, Close Combat, Mega Horn, Attract, Brick Break. Let's level up and let's hit it immediately. We walk up to Red. This would be our fifth and final encounter with him. We had come a long way from sweeping him with rollout to nail-biting close calls. It was time to put this era of Spizzlelock to rest, as we tap him on the shoulder, and to his annoyance, challenge him to a battle. One. Last. Freaking. Time. We had given the Blob knockoff and Earthquake, since Lightball gave Pikachu terrifying power that even the tankiest pink Pokemon couldn't handle. Our strategy goes smoothly, and now that we knocked off Pikachu's balls, we survive and KO with Earthquake. Five left to go. Blastoise. We knew Focus Blast was coming, and the only one who could possibly take it on Switch and maybe KO was Hera, but it was unlikely. And we needed to save Hera to ensure we could get Knockout on Snorlax and Lapras. I really didn't want to have to do this, as I made a big point on not treating Pokemon as fodder anymore and trying to keep everyone alive if possible, but I was starting to realize the truth, that you need to hope for the best but also plan for the worst. Crayon, you weren't planned on being a meat shield, but it's sadly what you became. We'll send our condolences to that hop up in the box after we're through here. Distracted by the loss fresh on my mind, I accidentally throw out Slicer X, wasting my safe switch in. I go to Hera anyway, and between the damage output and hail, I knew this would be a close one. I use Attract, but get hit anyway. I then one-shot with Megahorn. At this point, I'm tilted as my last couple plays felt stupid, convoluted, and unnecessary. But Red had four Pokemon left to go, and we were in the home stretch, so I had to compose myself and let it go. Slicer X handles Charizard. Three left to go. Despite life taking damage, Eruption was still strong enough to KO. Two to go. It was time for Hera to shine. If we could get her out on the field, we could easily sweep to victory. However, I knew the AI would select Brine, since that's Lapras's only way to hit super effective on life. And since Brine doubled in power if you hit an opponent under half health, 
Slicer X and Harrow would simply die, and Jack wouldn't be able to get a single HP of damage off even if he tried. So, with no other option, I'd send out Blob to take the hit for our team. Thank you, the Blob. You actually pulled a lot more weight on this leg than I thought you would. We Oko with close combat, and then immediately choke and use attract. Just in case! Then, we close combat the next turn, winning us the battle and closing the door on a huge era of Spizzalock. We were finally free! Never again would we have to step foot in Johto, or Kanto! It was all Hoenn and beyond from here. As I made my way back to Newbark Town, I got to thinking like I always do. This leg changed me a lot as a player. I was back to treating Pokemon less like tools and more like companions, careful not to just sacrifice a Pokemon for convenience sake. But I also understood better now when it's time to throw a Mon under the bus, because on occasion it really can be the best move on the board. On my way back to town I also realized we were finally back to having thirds on our team, meaning next leg, Jack and Hera would be Jack the third and Hera the third. And due to our super rough first two legs of Saga 4, the last time we had a Pokemon older than Junior status, besides Slicer X of course, was back in Platinum, leg 12, with Cook the 5th and Ronaldo the 9th. And if we want to get technical, the last time we had a Pokemon dubbed the 3rd specifically was the leg before that, leg 12 Ruby, with Evil Rigby the 3rd. So we've definitely had a dry spell on generational bonds and team dynamics. But with two new thirds and the synergy between Jack and Life, and hell, even Slicer X and Hera, I knew the future of Spizzalock was looking bright again. But that's gonna be about it for this episode. If you enjoyed, like the video, it really helps me out and, um, and you know, maybe check out some of my other content. You're the goat for watching this far, man. See you in Diamond.